26 year old IT executive married for two years. They went for a checkup actually. They have regular yearly checkup. She's not planning for pregnancy at all. Went for an annual checkup. USD showed a left ovary in chocolate. USD was telling 3.5. She has no history of pain at all. Ultrasound, they have told uh, there is a chocolate. So these type of reports are very frequently you get. Ultrasound showing PCOD, ultrasound showing chocolate cyst and all. So what is your plan? Is it such a, what will you do? How will you go about this patient? Uh, such yeah. A patient? yeah, this uh, will be considered as an incidental cyst. Uh -huh. Patient went, uh, she was, uh, you know, uh, not having any symptoms. On a routine examination, they found a endometrioma or endometriotic cyst and it is just 2.5 centimeters and she is not planning pregnancy at all now there is no need to start anything there is no need to give anything she doesn't have any symptoms it's a small one and you can uh, just observe it you can call her maybe once in six months to see whether it is growing and so as it you can know be just a hemorrhagic corpus luteal cyst also uh, it is so, very uh, that is another possibility we have to be very careful because sometimes there are many, many pictures that you can see in endometriosis, not always the same ground glass appearance or the multiple stipples. Uh, hemorrhagic corpus luteum also could be a possibility. And sometimes it may resolve on its own after three months. That's why I said a follow-up after three, three to six months is all that is necessary in this particular patient who is not planning pregnancy now, who is not having any symptoms and a small incidental cyst is seen. There is no need to even give analgesics, OCPs, surgery, nothing. But uh, uh, itching hands will only back. ask for a diagnostic laparoscopy uh, and surgery. Uh, that okay. itching has to be curbed. If she comes back, actually three months, four months, we have sent her after six months. Again, that cyst is remaining. Then anyway, you have to treat. So naturally, your first line will be medical treatment. The same way which you told. Okay. Yes. As she is married... Uh, would you advise her to try for pregnancy and all these things uh, as early uh, getting married and what is your concept behind it? Yes, that is very important because, uh, you know, she's, once she has got endometriosis, it's a progressive disease. So we need to counsel her that instead of postponing the pregnancy for a longer time, it is better she tries early conception and, uh, you know, that itself may resolve the or that will give a break to endometriosis. As we know, in the medical... What is the theory behind this, uh, this pregnancy and lactation? How does it prevent endometriosis? Yeah. So, as I was ab explaining, about to explain, the medical management has got mainly two types. One is hormonal and non-hormonal. And under hormonal, traditionally from my undergraduate days, we have been learning and teaching that there are two regimens. One is pseudo-pregnancy regime and pseudo-menopausal regime. So, pseudo-pregnancy regime consists mainly of progesterone. And if she naturally becomes pregnant or with assistance or uh, enhancement of the fertility, during pregnancy, there is a break. There's a holiday for estrogen, isn't it? So that way it will halt. And during lactation again, there is a break unless she starts re-ovulation again. So that way, nine months plus another six months, if she breastfeeds continuously, so she has a break of one and a half years from this cyst growing. So that's exactly where we must encourage her to become pregnant. She can actually try on her own because the cyst is not that big. It is quite small. For all you know, she may conceive on her own. If she doesn't, then probably we have to think of uh, the fertility enhancing treatment. Okay. Uh, sir, we will go to the, this. These are the things which are uh, uh, preferred, how long, all the things which we discussed actually. Eh? Yeah. Uh, uh, now we will go to the third case. A 21 year old student presenting with worsening dyspanoria, vomiting during period and bowel symptoms. Plan a USG was done, 4 centimeter endometrium on the left ovary. Okay. Here I will give an hypothetical situation. You have used OC pills for next one or two years. No relief. You have given a dinogist also. There is no relief. Okay. I just wanted to know that. Uh, any other agents, what are the other medical treatment agents used and the principles of management and how do you give and uh, what is the principles of management, how, what are the importance of other agents, so many agents for the postgraduate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. this uh, patient uh, seems to have worsening of her pain and she's quite young actually, 21 years. So, and you have already done uh, laparoscopic cystectomy, am I right? Uh, not, already sure. done. All, not already done, it is there. We have not touched her. We have okay. the medical treatment. Okay. She is not responding to OCPLs and dinogens. Okay, so she is not responding. So in such patients, 
it is said maybe we have to search because she has got diarrhea as well and vomiting so there may be deep seated uh, endometriomas or endometriosis for such patient maybe just uh, the anti progesterone are you for 86 is suggested uh, you know though the studies have not proven the efficacy as yet but as i said since she has not responded to the usual oc pills and uh, dinogest we can try that are you for 86 suppose that doesn't help her after a trial of 3 to 6 months we can give the anti angiogenic cabagolin that is coming up in a very big way so we can give cabagolin what is the principle behind it sir yeah, cabagolin yeah cabagolin is a anti angiogenic see when we have ohss if you remember uh, ovarian hyper stimulation we use cabagolin because it it is like a anti angiogenic as i was explaining earlier for endometriosis to grow in a ectopic region you need new vascularization and angiogenic uh, factors are very important so cabagolin acts like an anti angiogenic and that's how it will stop and it's easy medication that is once a week only you can give 0.5 mg and it can be given for a 6 to 1 year and if she improves with that there's nothing like that of course there are now experimental interferon is there and then there are so many uh, immunological modulators uh, and anti necrotic factor agents and all those things are there but they are in the still experimental stage i have not used them personally but definitely i have used cabagolin i have used mifigest uh you know these things are definitely sir what about letrozole letrozole uh, again it's an anti estrogenic people have tried that it is um, again in the anti, uh, in the experimental stage we would not use it just for the pain in a 21 year old girl okay. maybe if yeah if she also wanted fertility management it would like, it would be like a two in one and the thing is that i have used letrozole to point but the okay. problem is that you have to give for 6 months the problem of letrozole is that as you know you the patient will get long huge cyst because of the pituitary stimulation exactly. so if you are giving letrozole again you have to give oc pills along with it okay you exactly. are so that's why letrozole is uh, reserved if the patient also wants fertility and okay. and it is to uh, rectovaginal endometriosis and all some yes. people said that letrozole so yes. we have lot of such sex cabergolin i have used with a thesis not that so here what happened was that pain decreased but the cyst of this it affected the size of the cyst so the cyst did not shrink what is your experience sir uh, no, cabergolin doesn't uh, shrink the cyst whereas dinogest we have seen at uh, least 20 to 30% shrinkage in the cyst that's yeah. the advantage of dinogest over yeah. cabergolin sir yeah. one two more things see this patient you use anyway this patient has to be taken for surgery okay patient is not willing now okay so will you do any pre treatment uh, what is the, what is your role of pre treatment amh as well as amh coming to amh what is the role here yeah is see to, uh, as you know whatever may be the surgery there is some amount of loss of the follicles especially when you do cystectomy which is the best surgery for the endometriotic cyst and if the surgeon is very aggressive he is going to strip off lots of follicles and amh is known to come down uh, drastically and that itself is not good for the per- person who is specially planning to have pregnancy so a pre treatment amh level has to be done we did a study in manipal dr rajesh bakta you know ah yes, yes, know. Uh, yeah he did that study and it, we have proven that uh, amh definitely comes down post cystectomy patients however careful you are especially if you use lot of cautery then you are damaging lot of ovary a uh, good uh, good amount of ovarian uh, tissues so that's exactly why a pre pre surgic surgery amh has to be done and maybe you can also give gnr channelox while waiting for the surgery uh, if she is not ready for the surgery if she is not willing for the surgery and we have to again caution the patient that there is a reversible some sort of bone mineral density uh, uh, you know loss as well as she can have some sort of post menopausal symptoms but which is reversible so and the injections are once in a month or even if you give that uh, 11.5 uh, micrograms then it will be 3 months once in 3 months so probably that is the other option that we can give if she has not been relieved with other oral uh, medications sir what is your role what is your view on dmp 
DMPA, Depo Metroxy Progesterone Acid, DMPA. Yeah, the, the, the problem with that is, you know, when it is used even as a contraceptive, the irregular cycles is the one which most of the girls and women, they don't like it. Though it is another easy option because you have to give once in three months injections. It has been tried. As I said, you know, you have to play with different hormones. First, you start with OC pills and then you give damages for some time. Then you give metroxyprogesterone acetate uh, injections, DMP injections. You give uh, Jena. So you have to keep on uh, rotating these drugs. And then, of course, non-allopathic drugs also. Some, they will go to Ayurveda. They will go to homeopathy. They will go to all sorts of uh, herb, herbal medicine. Diet is also there now. So we have to somehow pull on with this. Luckily, unlike diabetes, which is for life, Endometriosis will stop after menopause. That's the only <laughs> saving grace. When you give GnRH, we have to give some add-on uh, to it. GnRH. Yes, yes. Uh, that is to elevate the uh, uh, you know postmenopausal type of problems that she can have due to lack of estrogen. There's an add-back therapy wherein okay. you can give again low dose OC pills to her. She may wonder what is this? You are creating a sort of a desert, and then you are creating oasis in that. So, yes, it is It is always a mix of, uh, you know, things. There is no straightforward treatment as such. So, uh, this is what we were discussing about all the medical drugs, medical management. This is the, anyway the first line of treatment, okay? So, in adolescent, young girls, uh, medical treatment don't answer as laparoscopy being the first. So, the, when they are not responding, then comes your role of laparoscopy.